Hey, it's me, and we're shooting the D850, and if you wanna see why we both look like this, well, you're just gonna to have to keep watching. Welcome back to TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from the camera store and it's a big video today. We've got the Nikon D850. But first I just want to mention a few things. First off, where we are, this is not Alberta, although I know it looks like it because there's a lot of forest fire smoke. We're actually in Bend, Oregon on a Nikon trip. They've been very kind to fly Jordan and I out here and do an event with the D850. But I do want you to know, as usual, even though we're out here with Nikon, we are going to give this camera our honest opinion, good and bad, and evaluate it. And honestly, we've had it in the store now for a few days. So we've had a chance to play with it already and formulate our opinions. Second thing I want you guys to understand about this video is that Jordan's actually shooting the entire thing on his own D850. So right now he's in FX mode and about halfway through the video, we're going to switch to crop mode because we really want to see how this camera behaves in both full frame and crop. Is there a difference? Look out for that. The last thing I want to say about the D850 is that on paper, this camera promises incredible specs and tons of features. It does really look like a jack of all trades and a master of all trades, I guess. It, it seems to do everything well. So my goal is gonna be to play with this camera on this trip, but also find out, is there anything wrong with this camera? Are there some negatives? And on top of that, who is this for? What kind of photographer needs this? We're gonna find out on this trip. So you're gonna hear this a lot during this video, but the D850 just seems to be a culmination of all of the best parts of the technology. We've got that great deep grip that we're getting used to on the new cameras, it's excellent. Even people with larger hands are finding it very comfortable. On the back, very simple now, just one AF on button, but right next to that, that awesome joystick selector that you get on the D5 and the D500. I love it. It's fantastic. If you're moving up from a D800, D810, you are really, really gonna enjoy it. That's almost worth the price of admission alone. As well, again, we've got the screen that goes out vertically and horizontally. XQD and SD cards, so makes sense. I mean, Nikon's pretty much the only company that's really jumping on the XQD lineup, but I really do like that card format, and the prices are coming down too. Now also something that's been borrowed from the lower end cameras, not the Nikon D5 to be honest, is the touchscreen capability. And I do like it. It's very nice to select menus to go through. I'm so used to using old school Nikons, I forget that I even have that option, but it is there and it does work. Uh, I've harped about this a bit on the live show and to anybody who's willing to listen, but it still doesn't have the D5500's thumb selector. I really like that with the touchscreen. I don't know why, but that's okay because at least I've got a joystick selector here. We've even got the I button. I mean, these are all features that are just borrowed from the entire higher Nikon lineup, it's a customizable button, you can use it for quick menus, and I like it. We're up to the prism here, but there's no pop-up flash. Now, half of you are gonna really hate that, and half of you aren't gonna care at all. I mean, most people don't care, but I did like having it, actually. Just if you were in a pinch, you need a bit of fill, or I did like using it with the CLS system, but I think Nikon's really now pushing for their wireless transmitter with the new SB 5000s. Getting rid of that pop-up flash, though, does let us have a very large viewfinder. In fact, as full-frame digital SLRs go, Nikon says this is their biggest to date. 0.75 times magnification. Even non-Nikon users who pick up this camera and look through it say, ooh, that's a nice big viewfinder. So otherwise, nice big sharp screen and you can certainly shoot there as well. All right, so I'm gonna take my little landscape shot here, but uh, you need something in the foreground, that's always the rule, and that's where a low screen helps quite a bit. Having that ability to go vertical and horizontal I still get very poor autofocus performance off the live view and that's just Nikon. But you know, now they're really kind of putting themselves at the bottom of the rung as far as speed of focus in, in live view. And that's gonna have some ramifications, not just for video, but for some of the other applications we're gonna talk about as well today. But for a nice still landscape like this, it'll do the trick. Okay, so I just need to take a moment to talk about one of the things that blew me away most about the D850. In fact, this might be the thing that really changed the game for Nikon. And that is, I was at the airport I loaded up SnapBridge, I connected it to the 850, and it did it the first time, and with one touch of a button, it was dead simple. So by far, biggest change for Nikon. I may be a change man on SnapBridge, at least in terms of the 850. And because this is my first day shooting the D850 in this kind of challenging light, I am finding off the screen, it is exposing a little bit dark for my eye. Now, this is from me coming from a D750 and using that quite a bit. That exposed in a much more traditional way. 
But the D850 does have a 64 native ISO. It does have amazing dynamic range and low light performance, which we're gonna explore later. And so I'm not too worried about it, but I am still finding in some shots that I'm overexposing by a third of a stop or two thirds of a stop, just to try to fill up that histogram and have the confidence to feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But uh, yeah, if you shoot the D850 stock standard right on the zero mark, it does tend to expose dark to my eyes. All right, so you can see we're getting beautiful light, but it's the last light of the day. And as the light levels are going down, I wanted to just try some shots at slower shutter speeds. Just kind of get an idea of the weight of the camera, how stable it is. And again, this is totally informal, okay? But I've been shooting around quite a bit, kind of getting a feel. When I first picked up the D850, I was worried about the shutter because it's got a quite a loud wrap to it. And it kind of moves a bit in the viewfinder when you shoot, but they've dampened it well. I'd say at about, oh, what am I at? 85 millimeters equivalent focal length shooting here. I can get about 10 to 15th of a second as sort of my bottom shutter speed. That's without VR, not bad. So it's a nice stable platform. I do still want to say something though. Keep in mind that regardless of what kind of shutter speeds that you're shooting at, this is a 46 megapixel camera. And if you want to get the most out of that, if you really want to get that super high resolution, this puppy belongs on a tripod. That's the only way you're going to get that high resolution to really shine on your lenses. If you're hand holding, there's always going to be some loss of sharpness and the 46 megapixels aren't going to make that big a difference. Okay, so we've got a nice early morning here and we've been shooting out here at Smith Rock in Oregon. It's been beautiful. And this is where a camera like the D850 is really going to excel. I mean, one of the main things we're going to aim this camera at is landscape use, especially with that high megapixel count. Now, as a Nikon user, what would be really ideal in these situations is a D810. I mean, that was the preeminent camera. And the D850 is carrying off of that and taking it a step further. But it's important to compare the two cameras together. And as far as dynamic range goes, first off, for these high contrast shots, we're essentially getting the same image quality. And that's not a bad thing because the D810 did an amazing job. This is class leading dynamic range. Now, when it comes to resolution, the 850 is going to give you 10 more megapixels. Not everybody needs that. I'm making sure I'm on a tripod here. But if you look at some of our examples, zooming in, we're getting tons of resolution. Now, one thing I am going to say and something that I want to check out when we get back to the computer a little bit later on, is that high resolution going to push past the limits of some of these lenses? The 16-35 f4 that I'm using today seems to be doing a good job. I do notice with the 24 to 120, it's not quite delivering exactly the same result. But overall, for landscape photography, class leading dynamic range and tons of resolution, easily competing with medium format. Just a couple more points I want to touch on with the D850, you know, doing this kind of photography. First off, this is a camera that now has an electronic shutter, and I know that's a big change on this camera, and it's going to have a lot of interesting ramifications, but for this kind of work, for myself, I'm really liking it because it's very stable, no mirror slap at all, and this shutter does give a pretty good kick, so, you know, I liked using that, trying it out just straight on a tripod, not locking up the mirror, I was noticing a slight resolution advantage there, so that's a nice touch. Of course, you can lock up the mirror, use self timer, and then the mechanical shutter is going to work great as well. For Jordan, he was over there doing a time lapse and he was using the silent shutter and uh, I obviously didn't hear him, so hopefully he was actually working. I have no idea. If you see a beautiful time lapse in this video, then you know that he was actually doing his job. Now on top of that, the other thing I want to talk about is ISO 64. This is a nice touch as well. And how it's going to influence us is just small things like if I'm doing landscape and I want to do slow shutter speed rivers and waterfalls, it means that I have more variety. I might not have to bring as strong an ND filter or I can push the shutter speed even slower. And those are nice touches. As well, when you want to get the amazing dynamic range that we're getting on the D850, you're probably going to want to shoot at ISO 64. That's where you're going to get that excellent shadow detail and still get it with those extra megapixels. It's a really nice touch. For Jordan, I think he's going to appreciate the video work, but I'm going to let him talk about that in his segment. Okay, Chris, we gotta go. Mm, no, up since 4.30, go. up since 4.30 bedtime. <laughs> okay, so no sleep for me, we're up. I'm gonna keep shooting, but it's cool. We've got a private ranch here. We're gonna shoot some motocross, test out the 850's autofocus capabilities. All right, so just testing the 3D autofocus here. And again, I mean, it tracks so good. And we've done this before 
We shot the D5 autofocusing test in motocross as well, and again, very impressed. We got the same system here you'll find in the D5 and the D500, so all in all, the D850 can certainly handle this kind of stuff as far as focus goes. So up to this point, we would say the D500 is probably one of the best sports journalism cameras on the market. I like the crop factor, it's got a big buffer, you know, 20 megapixels is plenty for most people, and it's really, you know, very fast with this autofocusing system. Now the D850 does something very unique because it kind of, in a lot of ways, replaces the D500, or at least can in your workflow. I mean, here we're getting 46 megapixel files, 14-bit raw, you're still gonna get well over 50 shots. If you go to 12-bit, you're gonna get well over 100. And JPEGs, it's obscene how many you can shoot in a row. But on top of that, if I choose to shoot half raw, or with a DX crop, I'm gonna get an even bigger buffer on top of that, comparable megapixels to the D500, and I've still got the same focusing system. So the D850 really gives you a lot of versatility in sports and action, a camera that you would not normally think to do this kind of work. And again, the autofocusing system, I'm playing with it here, and the hit rate is just incredible. It's hard to miss on this camera. But now with that 180,000 point RGB sensor, group autofocus, I mean, this camera can really easily keep up and compete with any of the top wildlife sports and journalism cameras on the market. Now, another advantage that you have here over, well, let's say the D500 is when you do choose to crop to DX mode at 19 and a half megapixels, of course, your viewfinder is still full frame, so you're going to get your frame lines for the DX crop, and this makes it really easy, especially when you're doing sports in action, to see the action outside of the frame. You can anticipate it better, you get a very, very good sight picture of what's going to happen, you can get your framing accurate, and especially in something like motocross where the bikes are traversing horizontal and vertical planes very quickly, that can be a lifesaver. It's a really nice feature to have. Now another thing I want to talk about when it comes to this kind of thing is of course they do have an electronic shutter on here and they are incorporating basically a 4K photo mode, 30 frames per second, electronic shutter, I mean very much like pulling still frames off the 4K footage. Now, this is where we have some disappointment with the camera, and really the only thing I can really complain about the 850 seems to be the silent modes in live view. Our main problems are gonna be that again, Nikon has not perfected an effective autofocusing system during live view, so you're not gonna be able to track anything properly. The second issue is although you are getting 30 frames per second, the rolling shutter on this large sensor is rough, it's brutal, and so any sort of panning or moving shots, you're gonna get very strange diagonal lines, and it's gonna look wacky. So unfortunately, you know, this is gonna be relegated to capturing baby's facial expressions or you know static shots of a kid jumping in a lake or something as long as there's no panning or movement and no need to autofocus the camera is going to do a good job otherwise you're going to stick to mechanical shutter speeds so all in all i've got a lot of confidence in the d850 for shooting this kind of stuff uh, it's fast you got high resolution to crop frame rate's good and the autofocus is just the best that nikon makes uh, overall d850 has been fantastic so about the only thing i would say when shooting sports in action here Stay away from the live view focus, this is not good. That's all my fault. <laughs> I hope you got it, Jordan. I got it. <laughs>
Now, people will justifiably be concerned about the 46 megapixel files in terms of just how much space they take up. 100 megabyte RAWs are gonna eat your drives up very, very quickly. So the D850 does have a half raw option. You know, besides cropping afterwards, if you don't need 46 megapixels, you can reduce that down. Now, the half RAWs give you a really nice option to reduce that size of file, still get really good photos for your workflow, and so that makes the D850 more versatile than ever. You, know, you get a lot of people in the store who buy high-res cameras like the D850 and they get disappointed very quickly because any sort of faults that they have as far as maybe a lens front or back focusing or too slow a shutter speed causing motion blur, any of these sort of mistakes that we make are amplified with these high-res cameras. You might not see it on a low-res file, but you certainly see it here very clearly. And you know, one of the things like front focus and back focus that can be very frustrating for SLR users is actually very easily taken care of by Pro Nikon SLRs of recent times. I love this. They can adjust front and back focusing issues by using the contrast detect focusing system in the live view. And where we would normally have to do this with a test chart, pushing values forward and backwards, the Nikon will do automatically for you very easily. It's a beautiful system and it's absolutely essential to have on something like this with 46 megapixels of resolution. Okay, so for this next part, I want to mention that I'm going to be moving forward and backwards quite a bit here because we're actually testing two things. Jordan is testing the face detect function in live view. Now, this is a little bit different than face detecting through the optical viewfinder. The camera is going to detect faces. It's going to try to track, and it's actually going to give emphasis to the eyes. Now, it might be drifting in and out, so if you see that, this is in full time in video, and so uh, Jordan's going to talk about whether he actually likes this function or not in his talk for video. But where I do actually like this part is for portrait shooting. It actually does a really good job of picking up people's faces as long as they're not moving rapidly or quickly. Again, we've had some disappointment with the live view autofocus on Nikons as far as, for example, the, the motocross bike racing. It just doesn't have the capability to really track moving subjects quickly. So wildlife, sports, journalism, you're not going to want to use this. But for a portrait shoot where you're shooting a person's face and they can move around the scene comfortably, it should be tracking me quite well right now. And again, if they're not moving quickly, I know that I'm going to get great focus Focus and with the emphasis right on the eyes, which is exactly where you want it. So I would use it for that kind of situation. It's been quite effective. Now for moving and video work, that might be another story. All right, so we're still at the ranch. We just finished up there doing the commercial shoot at the barn, but now we're actually gonna head out to the Deschutes River and just kind of get some neat rafting, kayaking shots. It should be a fun action oriented event that we can just get more autofocusing tests with. But I just want to mention quickly, Jordan is now switching over to the DX crop mode in 4K video on his D850. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. See if you notice any difference. We're not expecting much, but it might be there. We'll see you out there. All right, I'm loving that burst rate. And again, the buffer on this camera is incredible. So right now I'm shooting at nine frames per second and that's made possible by this MBD18 grip that I've got on the bottom here. You've got to have an ENL18 battery in there as well to get the nine frames per second. But if you're shooting sports or wildlife or any sort of event like this, it's nice to have the extra battery life. I don't have to remove the ENL15 that's already in there. And on top of that, it gives me a nice weight and feel if I'm gonna use long lenses to balance for sports and action. Now on top of that, we do have to consider the cost. I mean, unless you're already rocking a D4 or a D5, an e, &E l 18 battery and charger, it's gonna be at least five, $600. The grip's another $500. This stuff adds up, but it's just a testament to the versatility that we have with the D850 if we wanna shoot this kind of photography. Hey everyone, it's Jordan, the handy capable video guy, to talk about the video features on the Nikon D850. And usually we wouldn't dedicate a lot of time to it because Nikon hasn't been great on the video front, but they've made some really big strides with this camera, so I'm going to take a little bit of time. To start with, we now have full frame 4K video, and this is a really big deal. Looking at the D5, the D500, they had heavy crops when you were shooting 4K. With this, we get to use the entire sensor, so you don't have to change lenses when you switch to shooting video, but they also give you a Super 35 crop, and I love this. If you're shooting with prime lenses, it's like you've got two focal lengths. Depending on the glass you want to put on, you could throw DX glass on it. It opens up a lot of options. And what really surprised me, unlike a lot of cameras, there's not really one that's dramatically stronger in terms of video quality, whether you shoot full frame or you're shooting in that Super 35 mode, you're getting a very sharp image 
excellent low light performance. You can see some high ISO samples here. And again, no difference between that Super 35 and full frame capture. They also have their flat profile and it's, it's not as good as a dedicated log profile, not quite as flexible, but it does give you quite a bit of dynamic range and it's very easy to grade. So if you're just getting into video and you're like, ah, I'd like some creative flexibility, but I don't want to take a course to learn how to work with it, it's actually a really nice profile. One of the big headline features on the 850 has been the ISO 64, which is mostly touted for still photography to get a bit more dynamic range, but it's great in video too because I didn't have to use as much ND as I typically did. And when I was shooting out in the shade or clouds came rolling through, I didn't need to use NDs at all and still get the correct shutter speed with this. Uh, it's a great feature. I'd like to see that on more video cameras, more low ISO. Now, talking about shooting outside as well, there is a beautiful screen on this. It's quite bright, it's extremely sharp, and it's a touch screen as well uh, with a little hingy flippy thing. Now this is great because there's no electronic viewfinder since this is a traditional DSLR. So this screen has to be good. I found it quite usable outside and the viewing angle is really nice on it as well. Now with it being a touch screen, we've got the option of touch focus. We can choose a subject we want to track or we can just poke on a focus point. And you can see an example here. I didn't use it for autofocus very much because this is exclusively a contrast detect autofocus system. You touch your subject, you see here, it'll do a little wobble, hit the subject, touch, little wobble, hit the subject. Can be really infuriating and it just looks bad, it's distracting. On top of that, a lot of the Nikon lenses have heavy breathing which draws attention to it. So you will want to manually focus when you're using this camera for the most part. And I will say, the lenses that we are using, especially this 24 to 120, very short, very touchy focus throw, I actually struggled with it quite a bit. Now the D850 has some really nice assist tools. I like that they've got Zebra on there and a histogram with a level, but unfortunately you can't put the histogram and level up at the same time. Uh, much more annoying than that though is they've added peaking to this camera, which is great, works very well when you're recording 1080, but for some reason it's not available in 4K, which is exactly when hitting focus is the most critical. I hope Chris has me in focus right now. We don't know for sure because we don't have peaking. Uh, I also really worry about the Nikon preamps. They've been historically pretty terrible. And this one, unfortunately, isn't an exception to that rule. Uh, you can see an example right here. The volume goes from 0 to 20. I put it at the midpoint 10. Give this a listen. So as not to spook the lizard, I'm going to talk in a very gentle tone, but also it's a great way to test the preamp on the Nikon, which Jordan is cranking up right now, uh, specifically so we can see what the quality is like. So you can hear the audio has a lot of hiss to it, even though we're only using it at the half volume level. So you got to run a hot signal into these microphones. Now, if you're into time lapse, then much like David Schloss, who was just behind me there, the 8K photo sounds really professional, but I don't find it terribly useful. It doesn't actually build the sequence for you in camera. It's just their usual intervalometer. It'll, it works very well. Uh, it's a nice, elegant design, but you're still going to have to process all those images into an 8K time lapse yourself. They're huge files, but they do give you some room to move around. One other great thing for video is if you want to do some slow-mo capture, this does have 120 frames per second at 1080. Now, it's quite soft and there's actually a really heavy crop if you're shooting in full frame mode, but it's nice to have if you want really great 1080 slow-mo. The 1080 60 looks excellent. Won't play back in slow-mo, but that's your best option for quality. So at the end of the day, where do I find the D850? It's a huge step forward for Nikon. The video quality is good, features are better than they've ever been, but they're still attached to a DSLR, and I really feel like I've moved past that for my primary video capture. If you buy this camera for stills, you're going to really love the video that comes out of it. You just have to work with the limitations of not having an electronic viewfinder, very few lenses that you can adapt to it. Uh, and it's going to do a great job for you. But as a primary video capture device, I think the world is moving away from DSLRs. I certainly have. And I'm really looking forward to Nikon throwing all this into a very cool mirrorless professional body in the future. So we're out here. Uh, we're going to do some night photography. And uh, it's late, but we decided to come out anyways. We've got a beautiful sky no lights around here small towns and uh you know you only live once and jared poland says it fro knows yolo so that's why we're out here so obviously i know this isn't very flattering light but uh one of the amazing things about the 850 minus four ev focusing through the viewfinder 
I don't know if this is minus four EV, I'll be honest with you. I'm holding a cell phone light above my head. But you know, just an example, it is very dark. It is dark as shit. And if I point my camera here, central focusing point, bam, it picks it up very nice. I can knock it out of focus here again. And it hit it. A little bit of hunting, but it certainly did it. So, you know, in low light situations with minimal light, the camera can focus. So it does work. It's a nice feature to have. All right, so of course, one of the fantastic things about the Nikon D850 and something you find on a lot of the other pro bodies is just the illuminated buttons. Not only does the top LCD light up when I pull the light switch here on the on off toggle, but also all of my buttons on the side light up. And this just makes it very easy when you're doing this kind of photography. It's a nice touch. Now having red light source is really handy when you're doing night photography because you know apparently you don't lose your night vision when you're using it but I also want to put red light in the foreground of my photograph on these old trees as I take this picture and I don't have a red light but I do have a cell phone and I've got my finger so the blood in my finger coupled with that bright white cell phone light I get myself a red lamp. Well, TCS TV viewers, as you can see, we're no longer in beautiful Oregon. We're actually back home in Alberta where things are cold and gray and all that was once green is now dying. But that's winter and uh, that's okay because we want to come back home, take a look at these D850 files and just really evaluate them. But George's saying that we're running out of time. I know this video is already very long as it is. So let me just preface this quickly by saying the D850 is some of the best SLR image quality we have seen to date. I mean, this sensor is fantastic, and I really don't think there's any other SLR out there that can really quite touch it. All right, but to be more specific and give direct comparisons, but still keep it brief, 5D Mark IV from Canon, the D850 is very close and has way more megapixels, so that's a win. Compared to the D810, very similar look, almost the same performance, but the 850 has less color noise and way more megapixels. And again, the Pentax K1, similar story. I love Pentax's low light processing software specifically, but again, the D850 is basically the same and gives you 10 more megapixels. The only camera that comes really close, I guess, would be the Sony a7R Mark II due to its 42 megapixel resolution. And again, low light performance, I actually like the Nikon's look a little bit better, but it's so comparable. The 850 is not beating anybody square out in low light performance, but it is doing it at the same level with so so many more megapixels. Now it's a similar story with the D850 when we talk about dynamic range. The 5D Mark IV though, the 850 has a distinct advantage to dynamic range and again it's coming down to those extra megapixels. The, uh, the K1, we love the dynamic range on that camera, the D850 is still going to beat that out slightly. The D810 is the gold standard up to this point and they have a very similar way of dealing with shadows and highlights. Both Nikons love to go deep into the shadows and you can bring that detail really really well but the D850 is doing it with more megapixels. Again, the Sony a7R Mark II, my money's still on the 850 for giving us the best dynamic range on the market, and again, four million more pixels. So, very similar story. Overall, the D850 has incredible image quality, lots of dynamic range, and that makes it very easy to use. So yeah, the D850 wins. I mean, it's an incredible camera and it's easily the most full featured actual SLR that's on the market. I mean, I love the 5D Mark IV, I really do, but this camera beats the crap out of it in every way, shape and form if you wanna get competitive like that. And a lot of people are talking about the D850 in comparison to its Nikon bodies, how it basically makes them obsolete. I don't think so, but mostly it's because of price point. I mean, the D500 is an amazing journalistic camera and it's a lot less money. The D750 might be all the megapixels you need and it's a lot less money. And the D5, well, don't buy one. But the D850, if you've got the cash, can do everything. The 46 megapixels on this and the dynamic range is amazing for landscape photography. If you're more into sports and journalism, yeah, you can drop down to the half frog or leave it at 46 megapixels and get an amazing ability to crop. Wildlife photographers love the D810 and they're going to love this even more. The camera focuses quick, it's got intense frame rates, and the video has been vastly improved. So this 850 is so versatile and if you've got the cash, it can do almost anything. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and say that the 850 is perfect. We had some minor problems, you know, things like the live view autofocus are about the only thing that doesn't compete with some of the other manufacturers out there. But otherwise, this camera is near perfect as an SLR. What I really love about the 850, I think more than anything else, is that Nikon just said, hey, 
let's not play this game where we make people wanting for some features and you know only excited about others let's just give them everything that we can and i feel that's the greatest hallmark of this camera nikon has given you everything that they possibly have in their technological wheelhouse the only camera that I really want to mention beside this would be the Sony A99 Mark II. And the reason why I want to do that is because that is a technological marvel on its own, has a very high res sensor and does amazing image quality. But more so, that was the camera that we said, is this a dinosaur? Is this the last of it? Is this the end of SLR type cameras as we know it? And I'm kind of left with the same feeling here. If you're an SLR user, an Nikon user, this is an incredible camera, buy it, you will love it. But is this going to take away the market from the mirrorless? Is it going to win people back to the SLR market? I don't think so. I still see a lot of people moving on to mirrorless cameras, getting something smaller and lighter because those cameras are only getting better. So is this the flying Tyrannosaurus Rex with feathers right before the meteor strikes? Possibly. Time will tell. You're going to have to stick around and see if that takes place. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but before we go, I just want to say, first off, thank you to Nikon for taking us out. I mean, they did treat us really, really well, and we appreciate that. But again, we still have honest feelings about the D850. Thankfully, we really love this camera. Also, thank you to our fellow uh, social media press and YouTubers out there. You'll recognize them in the video, especially Tony and Chelsea Northrup. You gave us some footage. We really appreciate it. Otherwise, thank you to you for watching our videos as always, and don't forget, send comments to us subscribe check out instagram and twitter feeds keep in touch with us but all in all an amazing camera a fun video and a great experience we'll see you guys soon thanks so much